Dina Saik Dahl, law and criminal legal analyst, joins us now on the show. Dina, good evening and thank you for your time here on CTV News Channel. Thank you for having me. So parents of the suspect pleaded not guilty to four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Were you expecting this to happen? What's your reaction? It's highly unusual for the parents to be charged in a mass shooting like this. In fact, I don't think it's ever happened. But the facts of this case, people were kind of suspecting that they might be charged. The fact that they bought the gun so recently may not have locked it up. And all of the warning signs from the school were ignored by them. Let's talk about that because that was going to be my next question to you. While, of course, I've heard this before, this, sort of, like, this may be the first time that parents are being charged. But let's talk about those red flags in place because there was so much that they were being told and yet I think little action was taken. Exactly. And that's why I think these charges may very well stick. It's kind of the difference between having a car accident and they're not being criminal liability and driving the car while you're drunk and having an accident and that being criminally liable. It's not just that they had a gun in their home. The fact was the day before they were informed that their son was looking for ammunition and the mother texted, you know, LOL, just don't get caught. And then the next day they were brought in that the son actually depicted a drawing of shooting children and they still didn't determine, did he have the gun with him? Was the gun secured in their home? You know, very basic things that somebody would do in that situation. That seems to me very likely to rise to the level of recklessness. And that is what they need to prove here, that they were recklessly negligent in their handling of the situation. And amidst all of this, when they were supposed to appear for their arraignment earlier, they went, quote unquote, missing for a time. But of course, their counsel says they were not missing, they were not in hiding. But it took a while for the teams to actually locate them. And there was a fugitive uh, uh, warrant issued against them as well. Yes, also highly unusual. In fact, they were f um, found in a completely different city. They were found in Detroit. They were found in a commercial building, they are described by law enforcement as hiding. And there very well may be charges related to that. The law enforcement think that there was somebody who was helping them to hide. That person might be filed with, you know, some sort of obstruction of justice charge. So although I, their lawyers say they were not fleeing, the facts around it does appear to seem that they were fleeing. So two questions now. What happens next to Ethan and the parents? And secondly, has this thrown open the debate once again on you know, gun laws in the country? The fact that a 15-year-old could access this gun so easily and then cause so much damage? I mean, absolutely. I think it just brings up again this conversation that is a uniquely American problem and has again and again. And the fact that the parents were charged here, you know, may very well change the conversation. I think there's also going to be a heightened scrutiny on the school itself because of the very many red flags that were brought in here. What's happening with them is all three of them are now, you know, behind bars, evidently in isolation, cannot communicate with each other, and the parents have a very high bail, 500000 each. So they may, re may very well stay, you know, behind bars until their trial. Yeah, it's a total of $1 million that we are speaking of. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, Dina Saig Dahl, law and crime legal analyst, appreciate you joining us. Thank you for your time, Dina. Thank you for having me.